DMS is a compact muon solenoid. It's an experiment located on the Large Hadron Collider Ring at CERN. The compact muon solenoid itself uh, specializes in taking data from both heavy ion and proton-proton collisions. And we are trying to both study the standard model of particle physics, as well as looking for new particles from beyond the standard model. The CMS trigger group at Princeton really aims to try to improve the trigger system at the compact muon solenoid. And we are trying to improve the data taking that we do during run three, as well as improve the data taking that we will be doing for the HLLHC in the next five, 10 years. In the engineering point of view, CMX experiment acts a very uh, big high speed camera taking uh, 3D photographs of particle collision for all direction up to 40 million times per second. What's happening as a function of time and the collisions is to record with high precision when the particles arrive in, in our case, the calorimeter. Normally, particles are flying out at roughly the speed of light, and we record them when they hit the camera. But some particles take a detour. We can measure that time difference. You may have a standard model particle that decays into a long-lived particle, which then decays back into standard model particles. Being sensitive to these long-lived particles would allow us to be sensitive to new physics. They have a relatively unique signature, so that's what we're hoping to focus on with this new trigger development. Currently, I'm uh, working on developing a new uh, trigger algorithm to select interesting collision events. So the trigger system filters the data for further analysis. Up to about 1 billion collisions take place each second inside the detector, only a fraction of which can be stored. Currently, the rejection factor is about 1,000, so there is always room for improvement in the selection algorithm. I'm currently looking for a new decay of the Higgs boson to two particles that we've never measured before, and we're looking for the cases where they decay to four particles that we do know about, um, namely two bottom quarks and two tau leptons. The Higgs is already a massive particle, and it, it uh, couples to very many uh, different particles. Higgs decaying to taus is quite unique because the tau lepton has a very short lifetime, and so we can't even collect the tau lepton itself. We have to collect the tau lepton remnant. The last few years, there has been a real big push to find uh, objects that don't quite look like things in the past, and that means new triggers, which means that we need a new way of selecting events. I've always been impressed by the ability to bring new physics up to the trigger group and say, we, we need something new, something we haven't thought about before. If we already knew what we were doing, uh, we would have discovered it by now. And so when we, we tackle what looks like the same problem, we actually do it in, in a uniquely different way. And that really comes from the, the breadth of the backgrounds of the different people. I think these sorts of diverse backgrounds gives people quite a lot of perseverance and it's something that I've seen in my team and in the work that they do. It also gives my group a, a wide variety of perspectives to try to solve these new and complex problems we have at the Compact Mu and Solenoid Experiment. There are thousands of people from around the world that contribute to this experiment and it takes huge effort and planning to start from a proton-proton collision to arrive at a, a physics conclusion. So no single person is an expert at each and every aspect of this machinery, which also keeps evolving with time and available technology. Everyone brings their unique experiences and contributes that expertise to the group, um, which is fun because then I get to learn from the expertise of my fellow students and the professors and everyone who I get to work with. There's the engineering side, statistics, um, computer science, coding, and physics. And for me, it's a privilege to work in this group and learn from all these different experts that we have on board, both at Princeton and around the world. Here locally at Princeton, I'm using facilities that allow us to do uh, testing of, of silicon modules and actually connect uh, silicon modules to the electronics. And that's a crucial part of the high luminosity LHC upgrade where we're basically rebuilding a huge part of the detector and Princeton's a critical part of that. We are working in the Advanced Processor Consortium, which includes uh, several CMS institutes 
who have uh, effort in the ATCA, FPGA, and the base processing hardware, firmware, and software. The high-level trigger system will start using graphical processing units or GPUs in the next LHC run. There is also machine learning studies at the hardware level. So uh, the possibilities for the future are indeed endless. In the future, we'll develop this new mass process, which brings together physicists from all over the country and all over the world for studying new center of mass energies and developing new particle physics experiments. And hopefully this will lead to a new collider in the United States. My hopes for the far future is that we use the reduced barriers and this increase in diversity to really try to grow the field of particle physics. What we have seen in the past couple of years is that more and more people are actually very excited about researching particle physics and studying the very most fundamental levels of the universe.